convinced tonight that what the modern day church has determined to be the real presence of God is in fact not the presence of God. What we call the presence of God now is an emotional fit. It is when we get real happy in church and chills run down our backs and, and we begin to move out of ecstatic emotion. But I want you to understand something, that there is always an easy way to tell whether or not you have been in the real presence of God. It is whenever you've been in the presence of God, you will always experience the power of God and you will always experience revelation. You cannot go into the presence of God and still come out ignorant as it relates to what it is you're going through. Even if you don't understand why it is you're going through it, you come out with the revelation of who your God is. And even if I don't understand why I'm going through this, I do know that God can bring me through this. Am I talking to anybody? I want you to know now that what is more important in the kingdom of God now more than anything else is our revelation of who God is in our lives. Not many of us really have a true revelation of who God is in our lives it because if I did, then I would not allow my current condition to dictate the level of my praise to God. It is too often that I allow what it is that lies before me to determine the level of my praise to God. But if I really had a revelation of who God really is or who he was in my life, that could never determine the level of of my praise many of us have a cognitive understanding of who God is but your cognitive understanding of who God is is not enough because when all you have is a cognitive understanding or your intellectual you have a hypothesis as it relates to who God is in other words you know God in precept but if you do not have a relationship with God you will never get into revelation and I want you to understand it will become disturbing in your walk with the Lord when you live in the kingdom for 20 and 30 years and you have a tremendous cognitive understanding of who God is but you do not ever experience manifestation of who the real God is it is one thing to know that he can do it but it's something else when he does it do I have a talk back church oh it is one thing to know that God is able. How many of y'all know that your shout changes levels when you come out of the storm uh, 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 f from when and where it is when you're going through the storm because when you're going through the storm the only thing that really keeps you is your cognitive understanding of what God is able to do. But when you start walking in the revelation of God what I'm talking about now is you've got to move from a cognitive understanding of what this book says in black and white to get this thing in your spirit and once this thing starts to manifest in your spirit then you can now speak those things that be not as though they were in the real presence of God uh, something happens things change in our lives what matters most in our walk with Christ beloved is the ability to dwell in the manifest presence of God and to be led by the spirit Paul says in Romans 8 and 14 he says for as many as are led by the spirit of God uh, these are the sons of God now you must ask yourself the question pastor preacher how is it that I can become a son of God I'm glad you asked Paul says to the church at Galatia in chapter 3 verse 26 he says for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus now the manifest presence of God is the place of the power of God is the place where the hand of God is shown in our lives it is it is as well the desired dwelling place of God for his people that, that's you and I. The place is described uh, as the Garden of Eden. Now, I want you to understand something. I'll come back and preach this next year. But you got to understand something now. The Garden of Eden is not a geographical location. Oh, God, help me.
help me tonight. You got to understand that the Garden of Eden is not a geographical location. You will find out for years and years, theologians and scientists and archaeologists have been trying to locate a demographic location called the Garden of Eden. But I want you to understand the reason that they cannot find the Garden of Eden because the Garden of Eden is not in a geographical location. The Garden of Eden is the Garden of God. In other words, the Garden of Eden is the place or the sphere or the atmosphere or the presence of God. Now, uh, when you look at the word here, the phrase, the Garden of Eden, the word garden is translated fenced or protected place. Are y'all with me? The word garden means fenced or protected place. Now, Satan has been forever trying now to seduce every believer from our garden or from our protected place because he knows that he is no match for God. He is no match for you and I as long as we stay in the place that God has for us. That's why in the book of Job, God, the Bible says, has a hedge around him. Satan knows if he can ever get you out of your protected place. Everybody say protected place. When you try to explain to people who cannot understand your level of praise and worship to God. They cannot understand why it is every time the doors open, you're always there. You've got to be able to let them understand that, baby, listen, the reason I'm always on my knees and the reason that I'm always in church is because I'm just trying to stay in a protected place. you you got to understand something. I am walking in deliverance, but see, you don't know what it is that I've been delivered from. And I want you to understand something. If I don't spend quality time with my Jesus, then the devil has a tremendous proclaim liberty to be able to seduce me back to the place that I've been delivered from. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor! I'm not as anointed as I looked, but tell them, say, I'm doing my best. The reason that I pray is because I'm trying to stay in a protected place. I know that God has anointed me for great work and the devil is angry with me. So the reason I'm always in church every Sunday is because I'm trying to stay in a protected place. Uh, if I don't stay in a protected place, I don't know about y'all, but I'm subject to go back. Paul said, the spirit is willing. Oh, yes, yes, but the flesh is weak. Uh, so in order to keep my spirit uh, overcoming my flesh, I must stay in a protected place. If you find yourself vacillating back and forth between victory and deliverance, it's because the only time you're in a protected place is on Sunday morning. Uh, but you've got to learn now, beloved, how to create uh, a protected place in your house because I want you to understand something it don't take much Holy Ghost to defeat a Sunday morning demon oh but you got to really have relationship with God to knock that Saturday night demon out oh you got to be in a protect y'all gonna help me tonight Oh, you got to understand something. I'm telling people now, you got to tell them that certain people that you can't fellowship with because you're trying to stay in a protected place. How many of you know that God has brought you from? You remember mama used to say, look where he's brought me from. And every now and then when I look back and see where God's brought me from, I see the devil talking about, mm, come here. You ever been somewhere? Somebody said, come here. Come here, come here. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, sometimes things get rough in your life and you know how you used to make it and you get tired of going through and you look up and see the devil telling you Oh, y'all ain't gonna talk to me tonight. Oh, but in order for you to be able to overcome that demon, you've got to stay in a protected place. When you understand spirits and how they are transferable and demonic distractions can become airborne, you become conscious of carnal bacteria that is causing spiritual decay in millions of believers. Oh my God, you need to understand them. That's why you got to be careful about who you share your dreams and visions with. Oh, the pastor just got through consecrating you leaders. Now you got to make sure that you staff yourself and surround yourself with people who are celebrating your vision. Because you got to understand that when you share your dreams and visions with people who are hating on your purpose, all they got to do is speak into the atmosphere. They release a negative spirit into the atmosphere. Then the Bible said that Satan is the prince and the power of the air. And so once they release a negative word on your dream, now the enemy against your purpose has now become airborne. And now folk that would have supported you can't support you because there is a carnal bacteria that has become airborne. Now instead of one person coughing, every 
me when you understand the concern with the ozone layer. You need to know tonight.